Okay, good morning, and I'd like to welcome Jeremy Gallup from the UK Environment Agency to River Talk. Um, good morning, Jeremy. Good morning. Um, yesterday, you uh, spoke in the plenary about um, the importance of integrating different European directives concerning the Water Framework Directive, Flood Risk and Habitats Directives, and you presented on a project related to that. Would you like to explain for River Talk um, the importance of integrating these directives, please? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think individually the uh, directives give us the opportunity uh, for river restoration. Um, um, but if we implement that individually, then we only meet the aims of those directives and we don't get the collective benefits and the other benefits that we should draw out from these projects. So I think there are opportunities to deliver projects that meet all the directive needs, but actually provide those extra benefits. And we need to see where the overlaps are and, you know, sort of like drive our efforts and any money we put towards this in the right direction. Okay. So it's a, it's a, a way of, uh, the integration is a way of achieving our environmental objectives in, in a water, but what, what sort of role does river restoration have to play in this? Is, is this a really important approach to try and achieve this integration or are there other ways? A, a river restoration is probably at the key, at core of, of this, I think. Um, and, you know, it's got a part to play, but it's not the whole answer. I think in terms of making our, our rivers a lot healthier, we have to go beyond river restoration and look on a catchment-based approach. So it's as, as much about land use as it is river restoration. And with the program I'm running, we're trying to look beyond the, the confines of pure river restoration and look to land use as well to help meet the aims of healthier rivers. Okay, yes, because you presented yesterday on the catchment restoration fund, I, I yeah. recall. Um, it would be really nice if you could explain a little bit more what was innovative and exciting about this project in that context, because uh, it seemed a very exciting initiative and quite different to some of the other ones we've heard here in the last day or so. Sure. I, I mean, the, the whole purpose of the Catchment Restoration Fund is to open up project delivery beyond the normal me mechanisms of sort of like um, government organisations and the Environment Agency, for example, in the UK, and actually offer the opportunity to charitable trust to actually do some of the work. And that brings huge benefits as well. They bring in a lot of volunteer action. They bring in their own money as well, which helps support what we're trying to do. And they have local knowledge, a, a lot of passion for the work they're doing. So it's channeling money in a different way and open up new opportunities. Because yeah, that was really one of the innovative aspects was, was working with uh, charitable trusts, yeah. I think. And um, what, what are the, actually the benefits of working with them ahead of your business as usual? Because, of course, as an environment agency, people might expect that you would be the implementing agency here. So what added benefits do you get from working with the, these sorts of organisations? Okay, I, I mean, there's multiple benefits. And we have an environment agency program as well. So this, this catchment restoration fund is supplementary to that. So with the environment agency, we have a, a program of nearly 500 projects. The catchment restoration fund is, is kind of smaller in terms of the number of projects, but in terms of investment, it's, it's comparable. Um, now, when we give that money to trust, they bring their expertise to, to, to the projects that we're delivering. They also open up a huge volunteer network that sometimes we can't reach through the Environment Agency. Also, because the Environment Agency has a regulatory role, um, the trusts are able to work with um, stakeholders that may be a bit guarded about how they approach the regulator. So farmers, for example, that see the Environment Agency as somebody that comes along to regulate. Um, if the trusts go along to those farmers, there's a, a more open dialogue and more chance of getting actual action. Okay. Would, would you be able, very shortly, to give some examples of the sorts of achievements you're seeing on the ground through this, uh, through this catchment restoration fund? Yeah, yeah there's huge amounts. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like tracking the outputs in 29 different measures. So everything from how many fish passes we've put in place, how many weirs and barriers we've removed, um, how much stop-proof fencing there's been put in. Um, so a whole range of measures. But, um, you know, so some of the trusts are actually really getting to grips with the money they've got and pushing the boundaries a bit as well and trying some new different techniques for, for getting other money in as well. So, for example, some of the trusts have actually got more funding on the back of getting the catchment restoration funding from private organisations. So that's a huge benefit as well. Okay, and maybe, maybe finally, what, what do you see as the future for this sort of initiative? As you said uh, yesterday, I think it's a, as a finite funding window, you're, you're bound a little bit by uh, government uh, priorities and spending. But as a model for the future, do you see that this could be taken on in a more, in a more mainstream way within the business of the agency, potentially? Absolutely, and that, that, that's my driving aim at the moment. Um, 
hopefully next year we'll get funding for a one-year period because we, we've got a general election in the UK next year, so we can only commit to one year possibly. Beyond that, I want to try and sort of like secure funding for a five to six year period if I possibly can. Um, and, you know, I can bring along the benefits that the programme's actually de delivered now and put that into sort of like um, the language that maybe the funders, um, the government funders might understand in terms of how much benefit we're getting from the investment that we're making and how we can sort of like do th things beyond what the environment agencies normally used to doing by using the charitable trust to do the work for us. Okay, well, um, Jeremy Gallup, that was a really interesting uh, explanation of your work uh, as it's going on at the moment. Thank you very much.